Hello everyone, thank you so much for choosing to watch today's video. I know it will not be a disappointment because today's video is all about love and love is what makes the world go round and round, but it can also make our life an internal hell. Why? Well, because depending on the style of love you fall into, you are either going to find yourself in a genuine attraction with someone or in a chemical attraction with someone. And the bonds that are based on a genuine attraction with someone are typically long lasting bonds very peaceful and it feels just comfortable and right. Whereas bonds that are based on a chemical attraction are toxic based on deception, manipulation, and at first feel really, really good because it strokes our ego, but over time really makes us question our self-worth, question our value, question our sanity. Okay, so I'm going to get into the six different styles of love according to sociologist John Allen Lee. And I really want you to take the time to reflect and think about the patterns that are apparent in your own love life and which style of love you fall into. And if that style of love really is resourceful and efficient and sustainable for you, or if it's going to be detrimental to your overall peace, sanity, livelihood, okay? So let's get into the three primary styles of love within this theory. The first one being Eros. This is a Greek theory, I believe. So I don't know if I'm going to be saying these terms right, but for this one, I think I'm getting it right. Eros is based on physical attraction, okay? This one is known as love at first sight. It's literally seeing somebody walk across the street or seeing someone at a party and getting physically aroused, getting excited, all right? Because you're like, oh, okay, that person's attractive. And because you find them so attractive, you idealize them. You start to give them qualities that you don't even know if they have yet. Why? Well, because our society, we really value and place a lot of emphasis and importance on physical characteristics of someone, right? The physical beauty of someone. The more attractive someone is, typically, the more they get out of life, right? There is this thing called pretty privilege. They get more benefits. They, you know, typically get away with more things than non-attractive people. There's just been studies on this and there's data to prove it. So, if we find someone attractive and you know we start to get excited about them inside, we idealize them and the kind of character they are because we want it to work. Because we know that if it would work and if it does work, we would get approval from society at large. Why? Because they look attractive. They are gonna be good arm candy. They're going to physically make us look better, right? So we paint this picture in our head that there's such a great person you know they're going to be able to provide for us in more ways than one more than just the physical and we idealize them so i think that this is just my take not the sociologist that the reason why women fall into this style of love is because of how they have been conditioned women we grew up watching disney princess movies and the girl always falls for the prince charming right and prince charming is not unattractive he has the washboard abs he has nice hair the nice face okay have you ever heard okay let me just ask have you ever heard a girl say that her favorite movie is beauty and the beast i haven't why well because no girl wanted that for herself no girl wanted the beast like oh yeah it's cute it's a cute movie but no one wanted to resonate with that i never heard a girl growing up say that that was her favorite movie she always said cinderella sleeping beauty what's the other ones i don't even i'm blinking because <laughs> i don't really watch a lot of, it, it's been a while but I feel like younger girls fall into the style of love because that conditioning is more prevalent when you're younger versus when you mature and get older. You kind of, you know, start to think of that as less important and less valuable. But yeah, when I was in middle school, high school, like I was like, I always thought, oh my gosh, I can only ever form a bond with someone if they're physically attractive, right? Because how can I ever go deep with someone if I'm not even physically attracted to them? Obviously my thinking and my standards have changed since then. I'm not so strict on like this picture perfect guy for me, but I, when I was younger, that was definitely the case. Why? Well, because of all these Disney movies and how we've just literally been conditioned by the media to think that what's valuable is the physical. And that's like our a good source of value. That's like what's going to be sustainable, which is not the case at all. So, that's my take on that. And if you are somebody who finds someone really physically attractive, then my advice to you is just to keep it at a hobby, right? If you did take the time to get to know that person and you found out that they are not able to provide for you more than physical, right? They can't provide for your emotional needs, your psychological needs, your intellectual needs, um, and you don't even like them as a person, right? You don't even vibe as friends, then I think it would be fine to keep it at, you know, just physical and Keep it out of hobby. That's what I'm trying to say. 
it's fine if you keep it on a hobby because you don't want to be expending a lot of time, energy, and resources for this person who cannot provide for you in more ways than just that one way, which is just the physical. So that is my take on that and my advice on that. So let's now get into the second style of love, which is Ludos. This is based on conquest. People that resonate with the style of love think love is a game. So as you can probably assume, there's a lot of manipulation and deception involved because they're trying to conquer someone. They are trying to win someone through ways that are not genuine because they don't want a genuine attraction or a genuine bond with someone. People who are in this style of love and who resonate with this are typically emotionally unavailable and are not looking for any commitment, okay? So I think, this is my take on it, not the sociologist, I wanna make that very, very clear. Excuse me. Hmm. I think the people that fall into this style of love are men who are either young or who are old and who have already you know gone through divorce have had kids or whatever and they just kind of want you know something physical whereas the younger guys they are really just more so driven by their biology what do i mean by this well men are hunters because of our roots right back in those days the women would gather the men would hunt and so it's natural for them to want to spread their seed. And also men don't release oxytocin, the hormone that is known as the cuddling hormone that makes women feel more bonded to a man after sexual relations. They don't release that after sex. They release dopamine, a lot of it, because they only really feel pleasure. So that's why they don't feel attached to a woman after sex whereas a woman really does feel very attached. So I think the reason why this style of love is prevalent for young men is because of the fact that they're driven by biology and also because of maybe life circumstance, right? Their environment, they've already done the love thing and whatever, and now they're at a point in life where they're like, eh, I don't really want that for myself anymore. I'm emotionally unavailable. I already experienced this with somebody. It didn't work out and I don't wanna do it again. So I'm just looking for something really basic and you know, physical. So those are the types of people that I feel like are in this style of love. And I feel like another factor that adds to why men fall into this style of love is their environment. I live in LA and a lot of people are attractive in LA and just big cities in general. Why? Well, because modeling is more prevalent. We have Hollywood, so there's a lot of actors. And so a lot of people are really pretty and picture perfect. And so if that's the norm, or if that's this type of people that you're constantly seeing and surrounding yourself with on a daily basis, and hookup culture is more prevalent in this type of environment, well, why would a man want to be emotionally available and want to commit if he's able to get a woman as easily as he can, right? Because a man is as faithful as his options. So if he has a lot of options in this kind of environment, this big city environment where hookup culture is prevalent and you know he can get the big prize, which is sex, very easily, then why would he want to put in the work to commit to somebody if he can just get it easily from somebody else who's willing to do it you know like you know the reward the sex sexual reward so i feel like that's also another factor as to why men can be in this type of style now the third primary style of love is storage and this is love that is based on friendship this is the type of love that creeps up on you because it's the type of love that you don't expect to happen right because when you form a friendship with someone that's all you expect is just to be homies with them so you're not going into it trying to present your ideal glamorized self right you're not going into it with this mask on because you don't really care about gaining their romantic approval of wanting you in a romantic way because that's not what you're expecting out of them you're just wanting to be homies so you really are your true and genuine self around that person and so when you do start to feel feelings other than you know a friendly bond with them and you want more intimate things with them it's genuine because you've seen their ugly side, you've seen their weird side, yet you still have those feelings for them. So I think it's a very beautiful love. What sucks is that friends that are in this style of love typically cannot ever form a true, passionate, sexual bond with one another because of the fact that they have been friends for so long and just the sexual compatibility is not fully there. So if you find that this is happening, learn to walk away and learn to communicate with your friend that you should just stay being friends because what ends up happening is that you'll end up resenting the person because of the fact that not all of your needs are being met if you choose to stick it out in a romantic way. So learn to walk away and communicate with your friend that, hey, we should just be friends. 
Now let's get into the three non-primary styles of love. The first one being mania. Mania is a combination of ludos, okay? Somebody who sees love as a game, who's trying to conquer, and a combination of eros, passion, okay? Somebody that gets you excited down south. All right, and as you can probably tell, this bond, this dynamic, these components make for a very toxic relationship between two people. Let me paint you a picture of how this could play out and the types of players involved in this kind of style of love. So we have the man that is emotionally unavailable but uses manipulation to try to lure a girl to get into his bed and have sexual relationship, you know, a sexual relation with her. And then a woman who probably has a codependent nature to her will be attracted to this kind of man because she falls for the manipulative tactics like love bombing and, you know, just like being really strong at first and being hot at first, right? You know, there's hot and cold. There's that dynamic that's also at play. But after the sexual relations have happened, the woman will end up feeling very attracted to the guy because she releases oxytocin, this hormone in the brain that makes women feel bonded to a guy, makes them makes her feel like she can trust a guy and makes her fall more in love with a guy. And men, because they don't release this hormone, they feel the exact same. And so because the man already got his biggest prize, his biggest reward, which is having sex with the woman, he now gets a little bit colder because he already got what he wanted. He never wanted a relationship to begin with. He just wanted to sleep with the girl. And so he pulls away. And because the woman senses that he's pulling away, and she she's not getting that attention and validation that she initially got, she starts to want to chase and wants to continue getting that validation and that approval and that acceptance from him. So her happiness is now dependent on something outside of herself because she went into it with a codependent nature because she fell for those things. And then she finds herself going through spikes, right? Where she feels this huge, rush of euphoria and elation when he does decide to go in hot in her you know go in hot with her and like reward her and validate her and you know say these words of affirmations to her that to make her feel good and then these spikes and this drop of depression and anxiousness and jealousy and possession and just you know feeling uneasy when he plays cold and when he distances himself because you know he's not ever really about her in the first place so this of course is very toxic and this could be very detrimental to your health, your sanity, your happiness, your livelihood if you are a woman that falls into this. Um, so please just be wary of the signs, be wary of the love bombing. And you know, if it's, if they're saying things that are too good to be true, it probably is. And you know, I feel like over time you kind of become more aware of the phrases that are just like blatantly like a reflection of someone's narcissism. <laughs> like, I mean, I have heard some crazy things and you know, some things where it's like, they think it's working, but then the ones, the, the phrases that are just so obvious where it's like, okay, I know like what you're trying to do. It's like, okay, you really think this is working? And it's always the ones that say just enough to keep you in, but not enough to make you blame them to where it makes you really go crazy and like want to chase them more, right? But now I feel like I'm at the age where if someone's like a big love bomber and it's like so obvious, I don't even fall for it. I'm like, dude, really? You're saying you want kids with me and this is our second date? <laughs> Like you're saying like you can see this life with me like you won't even know me like if anything that's, that's a huge red flag i'm like why are you saying this to me this i'm not getting attracted to you i'm not like oh my god yes it's gonna be so great like no like this is weird you don't know me i don't know you why are you already painting this picture about me like mm. if you find yourself in this pattern and you resonate with this picture that i just painted for you i really want you to ask yourself do i really like this person or do i just like the idea of trying to prove to someone that i am worthy enough for them okay that's probably gonna slap me in the face because when someone first presented that question to me i was like oh my gosh i'm definitely the latter <laughs> like this is not good this is not good at all like i'm like it's a chemical attraction literally because of that oxytocin release and then you feeling bonded to them and then the hot and the cold and it makes you like go crazy because you're like oh my gosh no you you, you just like me now you don't ah, and like you want to chase 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 but it's just it's not natural you're met with a lot of resistance because it's not meant to be it's not a genuine attraction okay so really ask yourself that and honestly answer it okay
Because more likely than not, you probably don't even like them as a person, but because you've been digmatized due to that hormonal release, common sense is now not very common in your head. You are choosing to overlook the red flags and just see the good in them because of the fact that you had that hormonal release and you are more attached to them because of it. So make sure that you are honestly answering this question. The next non-primary style of love is pragma, and pragma is a combination of ludos, which we already know means conquest and seeing love as a game, and also storage, friendship. You're probably thinking that this dynamic or this style is very toxic because of the ludos component, but it actually isn't. Even though a bulk of ludos is using manipulation and deception to form a bond with somebody, in this style of love, it is in a very business-like fashion and business-like structure where, yes, part, the both parties are emotionally unavailable and don't really yearn or want emotional connection and intimacy out of somebody, but they are very upfront about this. They are not playing games and each party knows what they're getting out of each other and they're okay with using each other as a means to an end because for them, they are gaining value from something that isn't emotional intimacy and connection, but from things that they think are more valuable than emotional intimacy and connection. So the best example I think is a sugar daddy, sugar baby relationship, because you know, the sugar daddy is providing for the woman financially, and even in some situations, social status too, and the woman is providing her youth, her beauty. So each party is gaining something and they know this upfront, right? They're not really completely in love with the person, uh, but they're able to tolerate them. So, and they're able, the woman at least is also able to have a very comfortable lifestyle and she's okay with that. And cause she signed up for it and she, and for her having that financial security, that financial stability, and also in some situations, social status, heightened social status is more important to her than having a strong emotional, true like love bond with somebody. If you are questioning if this dynamic fits for you or not, or if you are in this dynamic and you feel unfulfilled, then really ask yourself and honestly answer this question. Okay, this is a question that the sexologist presented a while ago in one of her videos, a Shan Boudram or Bodhi, I don't know her last name, sorry, but it really gets you thinking, okay? So here is the question. Do I want a love life worth living for, or am I in this for a love I can live with? If you are the latter, then maybe this will work for you. But if you're leaning more towards the first part of the question, then this probably isn't gonna be for you. Now, the last and final non-prayer primary style of love is apage, okay? This is based on selflessness. This is the sociologist um, Lee's ideal love. This he thinks is unconditional love, long lasting love, because it is based on eros, which we already know means passion, right? So you actually are sexually attracted to that person and you crave them at a sexual level or on a sexual level. And also it is based on storage, which we already also know is friendship, okay? So this is the ideal type of love because this person is committed to somebody in all aspects physically, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, and they are committed to seeing it through and making it work and making their partner feel seen, feel validated, feel heard, and feel accepted and loved and willing to compromise and make changes necessary in order to keep that person in their life because the bond is so strong on all different levels. So I feel like this actually isn't an unconditional love, even though the sociologist says it is, because there still are conditions in place in order for this bond to occur, right? You still have to be sexually attracted to the person, and so that involves some level of being physically attracted to them and thinking that they are attractive and hot. So I don't necessarily think this could be um, a bond that is formed from somebody who you think is unattractive, because the whole reason that eros is a component in this is because of that sexual attraction and that physical attraction towards somebody so those are all of the love styles i hope that you reflected and thought to yourself okay what patterns are present in my love life and which style am i leaning more towards or do i find myself in and is it actually beneficial for me or is it actually detrimental to my health my livelihood and my inner peace and well-being 
Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. The next non-primary style of love is pragma and pragma is a combination of ludos, which we already know means conquest and seeing love as a game and also storage friendship. You're probably thinking that this dynamic or this style is very toxic because of the ludos component, but it actually isn't. Even though a bulk of ludos is using manipulation and deception to form a bond with somebody, in this style of love, it is in a very business-like fashion and business-like structure where, yes, par the both parties are emotionally unavailable and don't really yearn or want emotional connection and intimacy out of somebody, but they are very upfront about this. They are not playing games and each party knows what they're getting out of each other and they're okay with using each other as a means to an end because for them, they are gaining value from something that isn't emotional intimacy and connection, but from things that they think are more valuable than emotional intimacy and connection. So the best example I think is a sugar daddy, sugar baby relationship because, you know, the sugar daddy is providing for the woman financially and even in some situations, social status too. And the woman is providing her youth, her beauty. So each party is gaining something and they know this upfront, right? They're not really completely in love with the person. Uh, but they're able to tolerate them so and they're able the woman at least is also able to have a very comfortable lifestyle and she's okay with that and because she signed up for it and she and for her having that financial security that financial stability and also in some situations social status heightened social status is more important to her than having a strong emotional true like love bond with somebody if you are questioning if this dynamic fits for you or not, or if you are in this dynamic and you feel unfulfilled, then really ask yourself and honestly answer this question. Okay, this is a question that the sexologist presented a while ago in one of her videos, Ashan Boudram or Bodhi, I don't know her last name, sorry, but it really gets you thinking, okay? So here is the question. Do I want a love life worth living for, or am I in this for a love I can live with? If you are the latter, then maybe this will work for you. But if you're leaning more towards the first part of the question, then this probably isn't gonna be for you. Now, the last and final non-prayer primary style of love is apage, okay? This is based on selflessness. This is the sociologist uh, Lee's ideal love. This he thinks is unconditional love, long lasting love, because it is based on eros, which we already know means passion, right? So you actually are sexually attracted to that person and you crave them at a sexual level or on a sexual level. And also it is based on storage, which we already also know is friendship, okay? So this is the ideal type of love because you actually like that person for who they are and their character so you can be friends with them and you have a sexual attraction towards each other. So you're getting the best of both worlds on top of forming a bond with someone that wasn't based on manipulation and deception. So it truly is genuine. This person is committed to somebody in all aspects, physically, emotionally, psychologically, intellectually, and they are committed to seeing it through and making it work and making their partner feel seen, feel validated, feel heard, and feel accepted and loved and willing to compromise and make changes necessary in order to keep that person in their life because the bond is so strong on all different levels. So I feel like this actually isn't an unconditional love, even though the sociologist says it is because there still are conditions in place in order for this bond to occur, right? you still have to be sexually attracted to the person. And so that involves some level of being physically attracted to them and thinking that they are attractive and hot. So I don't necessarily think this could be um, a bond that is formed from somebody who you think is unattractive because the whole reason that Eros is a component in this is because of that sexual attraction and that physical attraction towards somebody. So those are all of the love styles. I hope that you reflected and thought to yourself, okay, what patterns are present in my love life and which style am I leaning more towards or do I find myself in? And is it actually beneficial for me or is it actually detrimental to my health, my livelihood and my inner peace and well-being? Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.